Hello, I'm Martin Brown, illustrator of The Horrible Histories, and I've been doing that for about 25 years. I know. Unbelievable. But our latest is Horrible Histories Up in the Air. It's all about the good and the bad and the really horrible history of flight. Um, this is the finished artwork. This is the entire stack of finished artwork for Up in the Air. It's about a hundred drawings. Uh, yeah, it took a while. Um, right, but we're also bringing out a bold new look for some of your Horrible Histories' uh, favourites as well. So look out for those. Uh, today I thought I'd take you through how to draw a Horrible Histories figure. A few tips and tricks along the way maybe, um, but I'll describe what I'm doing as I go to show you what I'm up to. First thing we have to do is decide who we're going to draw or what we're going to draw and I thought we'd tackle um, someone fairly big in British history, Julius Caesar. I mean he didn't stay for long but you know he came, he saw, he took off. Um, so the first thing we do is, well I start all my drawings with a pencil. Now that's really not going to show up much on this paper so I'm going to use this orange pen instead. I start with a frame. It helps me to build the pose so I'm able to get the shapes I want or get the figure doing what I want it to do. Now it might sound complicated but if you can do this I'm sure you can do that. It's just a stick figure. Then I'm, you'll be able to do the rest. All you have to do Instead of doing a stick figure, why not try a box figure? Instead of the stick for a body, we've got a box. It's a much better shape to put clothes on and to, to get your pose right. It's sort of two squares on top of each other high. Legs are underneath, just slightly longer than the body. Knees halfway up. The hands are just at the end of the arms which are about as long as the body, hands sort of roughly in line with the, the hips here, chest is there, the hips are there, shoulders, elbows and that automatically gives you a better shape to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do for my Julius Caesar is build this box man. Got an oval for a head, a bit of a neck, a box. I want him slightly stooped slightly bent over as if he's been caught doing something or I don't know, stabbed in the back. So there's my box. So I want him slightly crouched, bent legs, not standing up straight. So leg, leg, feet and knees. So that's, see, that's my slightly stooped pose you've got going there. Um, we have the arms. I want them up like this. Hands. The other arm you may not see entirely. It's tucked in behind his body. So his arm sticks out there and his hand is there. So that's my pose. That's my framework to begin with. Now it's pencil, so I could change any of this if I needed to. But this will do for now. I think this is this is a good place to start. Now I have to start dressing him, thickening up the arms, adding details to the face. So he had quite a square head, did dear old Julius. A long Roman nose. I'm going to give him staring eyes as if he's just been surprised. Quite a square chin and that very Roman haircut swept forward, thickening up the neck, just give him sloping shoulders. Now a lot of this is going to be covered by what he wears, so of course a lot of these this framework will disappear. But where he's got bare arms, I can show those. Start to rough in the hands. 
hands are tricky and there's no easy shortcut for them because they change so much. The shape from here to there to there is so totally different. What I use is a prop. It can be a piece of wood or a pen. And if you see your hand in the position you want it to be, if you look at closely at the shapes that your hand makes doing whatever it is that you want it to do, then you can uh, use that to help your drawing. You see how the thumb wraps around that top finger and the other fingers are wrapped around. You don't see that much of the hand apart from this bulge of the, uh, the lower thumb and possibly the, the heel of the palm here. So you don't see a lot of the hand here. But, you know, looking at the real thing can really help. But if you don't get it right first time, don't worry. Hands are hard. Everybody struggles with those. Um, and with this one, I sort of want the fingers open in that kind of like, oh, sort of way. And so I've got my face, I've got my hands. It looks like that pupil might have to come over a bit. Um, now, can't really see the legs because so much of what the Romans wore, what a senator would wear, what, wear, what a rich person would wear, is all about the toga. And the toga is this huge flowing piece of uh, cloth that would wrap up and back and around the figure. So you can start with what's in most in front, which is the one closest to you coming off his arm. And this is drawing all over this, this pencil framework, but you'll um you'll see where it's going when I do the ink, I'm sure. And these huge this sheet of of fabric is flowing down in folds. It might gather on the floor slightly. So that's the one coming from his arm. It'll gather a little bit by his shoulder and around his elbow and this might look a bit messy but don't forget it's pencil so all this could be tidied up and rubbed out if i need it to a drawing like this would probably take me a couple of hours so i'm going pretty quick now this piece of fabric would go over his arm and then come back sweeping down in front of him and back up the other side wrapping around his neck once again, leaving folds over the arm. So you'd see that that would come down and hang in large loops. Make a bit of a mess of that. Once again, see, because this would be pencil, I'll give that a tweak. Where his knee is showing, that would cause a little fold there and then the, the start of the of the uh, toga is right hidden underneath what's in front so you, you wouldn't even see that properly and his legs would be there his sandals would be about the only thing you saw all covered up by the toga mostly so you've got behind the toga the folds over the arm around his waist there'd be more gathered bits of toga where you'd tuck it in. And then his tunic would be sort of underneath everything else, but largely hidden by his hand. There's his shoulder there, his upper sleeve, and the top of his tunic, and his neckline is there. So that is my pencil of my Julius Caesar. The next thing I'd have to do, I think I've got him clutching, clutching a scroll. Now, if I'm happy with that, obviously I would rub out these bits that are a bit fiddly and a bit fussy. I would go over that with ink. If I'm happy with everything that I've done, then it's time to just... You're probably drawing it twice, really. Ones with pencil. 
and rinse with ink. High cheekbones. Squarish chin. You can look a bit surprised maybe. That Roman hairstyle. His neck. The neckline of his tunic. And now I can start some of the detail of his toga. And his arm. Hanging in sort of folds from his wrist. Go over the fingers again. Oh, that's a bit thick. You know, it come down in more folds. There's no doubt that folds like this are tricky, but they don't have to be exact to get the right effect. It's going to gather around his elbow. Again, folds around the upper arm. It's going to fold over his shoulders. And this line here now carries on in front of him. In more big folds. It must have weighed a ton, this stuff. Can you imagine sort of carrying this around all the time? And the bit of the toga that's underneath, which would go behind his feet. Sandals. There we go. Part of his tunic, the fold at his armpit, where it tucks into that fold around his middle of the toga, his forearm, and his fingers clutching. Scroll. There we are, that's the line work done. And if I wanted then to give it a bit more texture, I probably, probably what I'd do is I'd rub out the line underneath, the pencil line, get rid of all that orange, all that pencil to make it clearer, and then you could just give it bit of tone by hatching some of those folds on the toga. Some will be darker. Some will be lighter. leave a bit where the light catches the edge. Bits underneath will be really dark. And on the other side. There you go. If you needed to, you could beef up some of the shadow by hatching in the other direction. 
So there we have it. A Horrible Histories, Julius Caesar. So if you can do this, you can do that. And if you can do that, I think you can do that as well. So have a go. I'd love to see what you come up with. But um, yeah, that's how a horrible history drawing happens. Thanks very much for watching.